Hey, what is up guys, Matt Coop here, aka MODC Architecture, and welcome back to another video. Now today's video is all about the Apple Vision Pro and what it means for architecture, what it means for architectural students as an employer or working in the professional world, and how we can really use it, I guess, and sort of what my personal opinion is on the Vision Pro itself. Initially, I think it's overpriced. I think everyone does, or a lot of people do, but let's dive into the advantages, disadvantages, and potential applications to architecture. After a roughly 30 minute demo that ran through the major features that are yet to test, I came away convinced that Apple had delivered nothing less than a genuine leapfrog in capability and execution of XR or mixed reality technology with the new Apple Vision Pro. However, just to be super clear, I'm not, I'm not saying it delivers on all promises or it's perfect in every way, shape or form. It is a genuinely new shift in computing or any other high powered technology within XR, which brings me on to the comparison with every other VR headset and AR device since 2013's initial Oculus DK1 release. It's incredible how you can incorporate the technological or the VR world with the real world. I've been awed and reawed as developers of the hardware and software of those devices that have tried to mimic or have come before the Apple Vision Pro have tried to find something that would get real purchase with the broader public and be possible. What's incredible is that Apple have actually managed to do this, albeit at a $3,500 cost, which is massively expensive. So what about this for architecture? So for me, architecture always had the potential for VR in terms of being able to experience the space and being able to collaborate on said space through connecting people to the same VR space or the same model space. However, it always felt a little bit clunky because you would never really see the person. It would be kind of this, I don't know, representative of a figure and perhaps the space wasn't changeable or didn't feel realistic. Something along those lines. There was something missing, I felt, within VR, within architecture. However, with this new Apple Vision Pro, I'm singing all the praises for it regarding furthering this because you can obviously see someone as well as see the digital display. So in theory, you could be in a digital space and see a person in real time as well. So being able to collaborate perhaps on the same physical space while talking to a person, I can only see as being positive for the architectural world in terms of work, workflow, collaboration with engineers, with clients, with other architects. It just seems like there's an endless possibility of furthering work efficiency with this sort of technology. And obviously perhaps businesses will be able to cover the three and a half thousand dollar price tag a little bit more than your average person. So just that's the main thing that I think would be fantastic for this piece of software. However, with it being Apple, there, do, there does come the difficulties of software compatibility because we'll, we all know that Apple perhaps isn't the easiest to get our softwares on with Rhino, Revit, etc, etc. You know, I know that there are Apple versions, but for me, a Windows user, I would find it perhaps slightly difficult to retrain or relearn the interface on an Apple product. Now, maybe I'm just being a bit pessimistic and perhaps it's easier than I realize. If it is, then great, this point is invalid in terms of a potential difficulty. However, for now, I feel like that may be a slight drawback. In terms of modeling itself, this could be a fantastic way to actually model and experience the space changing in the digital being able to take a block and then move it to another space or another point in space while still having your goggles on or while still having your Apple Vision Pro on, looking at someone else who's talking to you while you're doing it just seems like 
such a hands-on, interesting way to work an architectural space. It it's so interesting for me as a student because you know I've only known three D modeling, sitting behind a desk, clicking away, typing away, and then seeing a space kind of unfold on a screen in my eyes. However, being able to have access to a keyboard, which you can uh, a digital keyboard, and also being able to use gestures or whatnot to make changes or to swipe across or whatever in one single interface that you just have to wear on your skull modeling suddenly becomes so much more hands-on and you can understand the architecture you're creating so much easier rather than having to make these models as well in terms of modeling it could save a lot of money and save a lot of material on potentially needless iterative models you can experience the space digitally rather than having to see this kind of like scale model of a certain aspect of a, of a design. So I, I think there are only positives that come from this. And in terms of how compatible it is or, or how good the quality is, there are 24 million pixels across the two panels. It gives, it, it negates the sort of nausea feeling that you can have with other VR experiences. You know, you could wear that headset for a couple of hours and I guess even forget that you're wearing it, I suppose. But with that, I know with other VR or AR headsets, you can experience that nausea, which isn't ideal. And obviously you don't want to be experiencing that in the workplace or as a student. And so allegedly with the R1 and M2 chip, there are no sort of juddery frame rates as well or any drops in quality. And that's really useful or basically a necessity when working within architecture to make sure you have a constant nice color contrast or make sure you constantly have the right picture or no, no drops in quality, just so that you can maintain that efficiency working when using a new technology such as this. And the fact that you can have a 4K world around you with, with eye tracking is just incredible. The resolution means that you can read text and the fact that you can have this sort of virtual desktop just feels really interesting and a step forward for technology in the workplace. And this isn't just in architecture, this is just general. I feel like the workplace is going to change a lot because of the Apple Vision Pro. However, I feel like there are iterations to come of the Vision Pro which perhaps aren't as massive on your head. Like, you know, it's a, it's a massive headset. Or, well, maybe it's not massive, but it's a big headset on your head. And, you know, you can sort of see this developing into just a pair of glasses that you have to wear, which would be incredible. So, um... I guess those are my thoughts on what the Apple Vision Pro can mean for the future of architecture in the workplace and both as a student. I think all the points I covered or at least tried to cover are applicable to both the workplace and a student scenario. Um, let me know what you think about the Apple Vision Pro. Do you think it will be as effective as I think or do you think it's perhaps got more limitations than I'm letting on to? I haven't read everything about it, but I have a decent understanding, I think, of what's going on with it. So let me know your thoughts, and thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you, and goodbye.